So here we are back at the studio and I've got my cup of tea ready. It can only mean one thing, can't it, Sam? So, Lee, where's my cup of tea? Come on, bring it on in. <laughs> Don't worry about that, Sam. I've got you covered, mate. I've made you a cup of tea as well. So uh, I will pop it over now. We'll use the Matt Denton portal, version 1.2. So here goes. I'll just pop over now. Bear with me. Coming your way, mate. There you go, mate. Cheers, mate. Oh, hey. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Oh, dear. A bit frothy. <laughs> well, that worked quite well. That was good. Mm. Lovely. Right, if we just cut back to me a minute, guys. Um, thank you, boys. Yeah, so this next thing up is obviously is Sam and Lee, cup of tea. And <laughs> Sam actually set up the cameras for this. You may not be surprised to hear, because once you watch it played back, um, there's that much of me missing this upwards you just see the bottom half of me but i was there you can tell by my voice but uh next time i think i'll set up the cameras myself so uh here we go let's go for sam and lee cup of tea sam and lee sam and lee sam and lee and a cup of tea sam and lee sam and lee sam and lee and a cup of tea it's sam and lee sam and lee and a cup of tea it's sam and lee sam and lee and a cup of tea Right, I'm ready to make the tea now. Go for it. Go for it, yeah, we're filming. So, yep, as you saw, quite a wait there for our tea to be ready. This is because Paul used a teapot, which is a bit of a traditional thing, which people don't do as much nowadays. It's usually a tea bag in the mug and a straight mix, as you've seen in the past on this show. So the tea bags go in the teapot, you leave the hot water in the teapot, and you let it mix, or in some cases stew, so it can be a bit strong. So just milking first, I did notice, which is poor show in my opinion. I always put the milk in last, but there we go. You gauge how strong the tea is first and then you add the milk. But then if you've put too much milk in, then it's going to be just too weak. You can't make the tea stronger. But never mind. There you go. It did turn out to be a good cup of tea. But this is the trouble with the uh, teapot option. He's run out. He's run out of tea. Poor show, Paul. So what you have to do here now is exciting stuff, this I know. He has to go back to the kettle, top it up with water, just to give him a bit of an extra mix. And then just give it a bit of a swish around, just to release some more tea into the water. And then there you go. So there's the three cups of tea. I'm not sure what the choice of tea bag was on this occasion, but uh, stay tuned because I do know we did discuss that later on in the interview and uh, some special offer somewhere, no doubt, knowing Paul. And there we go. So three cups of tea. Thank you, Paul. And on to the interview. Let's do it, Paul. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam and Lee in... <laughs> And a cup of tea, <laughs> should I say? And we are in Paul's conservatory in Bristol. In Bristol, yeah. Thanks for having us, Paul. Lovely to see you both. Very kind of having us around. Appreciate yeah. that. And uh, oh, cheers. Cheers, 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 guys. Cheers. 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 Hopefully soon we'll cheers. be at an event yeah. with yeah. something a bit better cheers. than don't, tea. Don't clink it too hard because yeah. we don't want to chip the fine bone china. <laughs> Wowzers! <laughs> so tell me, Paul, what kind of tea is this? This is just normal, everyday, standard tea what they sell in the is supermarket. There, is there a brand? It was the brand. Yeah, it's um. Oh, we like to say the brand. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. yeah it's um the Twinings Yellow Box from whatever it's called. Oh, oh that's posh. a posh one, isn't it? Posh. It's called Breakfast Tea, I think, isn't it? Right. Okay. Nice. Twinings. Yeah. Well, we've had uh, a couple of. We've had a PG today, yeah. and we've had a Tesco's own. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're quite good. We've got over the last six months, we've had all the different teas, and to me, they all. Taste oh, good. so you do vary your tea? Yeah, you, yeah. Sometimes okay. I, right. it depends what's on offer. Uh, oh, ah, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. You, go, you go in the supermarket. You like an yes. offer? Yes. Oh, they're on offer this week. We'll have them. Right. Amazing. Very well, good. we're in luck then with yeah. Twinings this week. Twinings, yeah. Thank you, whoever you shop with. Oh, uh, Tesco. Good. Thank you, Tesco. <laughs> put Twinings on special offer. Outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding. Wonderful. Mm. Wonderful. Um, so we'd like to start, really, Paul, um, get straight to it with the droid building side of things. Yeah, yeah. How did you get into droid building? How did I get into it? Yeah. Oh. What, what started all this? Back in 2004, my youngest daughter, who's been quite influential with a lot of my stuff, as you know. She's the weathering girl. Isn't yeah, she? the weathering girl. She was ill from school, and she got fluid on her lung and all this sort of stuff. So she was spent because I was working from home at the time, instead of going to school, I would go to school every Monday, pick up work for the week, and she'd be at home. Uh, she was watching the TV, one day that she was going up through the channels, and she knew that I was into Lost in Space when I was really small, and she said, Dad, this Lost in Space TV show is on, that you used to watch, which you bug us about. Right. And I said, yeah, she said, and then, after watching a few episodes, she said, why don't you see if you can get a model? Because we, we were at Centre Parks a few years before when the film came out. Yeah. And they were selling the little models. And I didn't buy one. I thought, uh, I'll, get, I'll get around to it. And I didn't. Yeah. The usual thing. And then I looked online to try and find... I couldn't find one anywhere, but I came across the D9 Robot Builders Club, where you could build a full-size seven-foot robot. Wow. Okay. And that, then, of course, after... About five minutes of deliberation, I joined them. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of thought went into it then. Yeah. I like your style. And then I just started, then I messaged the guy running it, and he t I said, I'm in England, is that a problem? He said, anywhere in the world's not a problem, mate. He said, whatever you need, we can get, get it to you. So that's how it all started. Now. Right. And then three years later, I had him done in, well, a year later I thought I had him finished. It was just a static yeah. light up thing. And my wonderful father-in-law turned up and said, well, what does it do then? I said, just something. He said, hang on a minute. He said, so it doesn't wave the arms, it doesn't move. He said, well, that's no good. <laughs> <laughs> so it went from a static build to a fully wow. Challenge operational on. robot. He said, no, it needs to do a lot. He said, is somebody going to be inside of it? I said, I'm not planning. He said, right, you have to make it into a proper robot there. So he immediately said, come on, make it into a proper robot. <laughs> God. And then phase wow. two, uh, that, right. that was from say mid 2005, then the next 18 months, every evening, weekend, and every spare bit of time, I was stripped down and started again, really. Wow. God. Wow. But the important question, I think, first and foremost, yeah. before we move on, is what's your go to biscuit? My go to biscuit? Mm. Rich tea. Oh, <laughs> that's another, another new plain one. And yeah, plain yeah. and simple. Yeah, plain and simple. Yeah. Rich tea. The biscuit. Just, no, no, yeah. no, just well, probably it's a food. Another question we ask everyone when we when we do this um, yeah. cup of tea with Sam and Lee. Brilliant. What is your most treasured item? Him. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Okay. Definitely. Cool. Right. And there's a good there's a good, and there's a good there's well, a good, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a good reasoning behind why yeah. you built R2, isn't there? Oh God, yeah. Two thousand and eight. It was our 25th wedding anniversary. It took Julie to New York for a long weekend. It was great. Came back and um, she didn't feel unwell or anything, but she said, I've got this, well, not lump, but this little funny thing in the left-hand side of my chest. And she said, but it's not a lump. And I said, well, why don't you get it checked? And she wasn't very keen to get it checked. Yeah. And then after a bit of pressure and all the rest of it, she reluctantly went to the doctor. And even the doctor wouldn't. She said, well, it's not. No, it's not like the normal thing, but we'd, we'd check it out anyway. And that was when uh, it went from being, oh, they're just gonna, I said, take it your bollock and say, well, don't worry. I said, because they, they'd much prefer you to go and then yeah, check definitely. it. Yeah, So yeah, they could take the box and say, yeah, you're yep. good. Yep. And then unfortunately it wasn't good and she, she had cancer and, that, and, I, and I said, is it bad? And the surgeon said, it's the strongest strain and it started to spread. And oh, God. We really got to act quick. I said, what do you mean? He said, no, we're going to operate on it next week. Wow. I said, do I have to pay or anything? Oh, no, 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 no. We're, 
it's breast cancer and it's a big deal and we have to deal with it immediately. So so they got straight onto it. Right. And um, she had five operations and uh, in quick, rapid succession. Uh, they, I think they were a bit reluctant to keep taking and taking away because I said, why are you operating all the time? I said, well, we don't want to take everything away because we think we can save a lot of her right. uh, tissue and stuff. Yeah. So they, they were quite cautious about it, but they, they got it all taken care of in the end. And then they said, right, all the operations are done, now we have to give you chemotherapy. And she had the first one and it wasn't too bad. And then she went back to the second one and something went wrong with the medication, which we didn't find out about until afterwards. And she was really poorly. And unfortunately, she nearly died. Right. Wow. And it was a Sunday morning, a bit like this. I woke up at five o'clock. And then you wake up, someone wakes you up. I'm like, where, where, is, she? where is she? Uh went into the bathroom and she's led on the bathroom floor, barely conscious, so I called 999 and um, the, the ambulance came out and stuff and got her into hospital, got her stabilised and they said she's lost 26 pounds in 48 hours. Wow, jeez. Which was pretty, pretty bad, but they, they got her stabilised, got her fixed and everything and um, she was in the oncology unit for a month, but two weeks in, she was having a bad day and said, out of the blue, I was, they allowed me to, they, I even had a park, a reserved parking space in the bloody car park over there, which right. is not a place where you really want Sadly, to Sadly, you were coming quite a regular, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. said, here should, we give you a, like a season ticket. I said, what's that for? They said, because you're going to be in there a lot, aren't you? I said, unfortunately, yeah. But they said, yeah, and, and one night at about half nine, ten o'clock, for some unknown reason, she thought it was, she was going to die. I don't know what. What, I suppose when you're in hospital all the time, you get these weird thoughts, don't you, and stuff. And she said, um, your robot's great and all, but um, I've always preferred R2-D2 to so the Boston Space Robot. <laughs> oh, I, said, I said, why the bloody hell didn't you say that to me four <laughs> years ago when I started building that bloody great big thing? I said, I, I said, he's a lot smaller. It'd have been easier to build. Yeah. There's a load of guys here in England instead of just having to rely on America all the time. Yeah. And I said, don't worry, I'll build you an R2-D2 as quickly as possible. And that is the reason I started building him. Wow, That's it, it, that is like, I think, one of the best stories about why someone yeah. would build one of these. I've yeah. probably ever heard, actually. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I, and I'm driving home thinking, holy shit, how am I gonna achieve this? And fortunately, half the, um, B9 builders or two builders anyway. Right, right. Okay. So um, Guy Barderman and Jerry Chevalier, yeah. um, they got in contact with me and Jerry, I think, is a bit like um, yourself with the droids. I think Jerry had about 20 droids or something. <laughs> he said, I'll tell you what, he said, um, I've got a dome which um, which you, which you might be good for you. I said, what do you mean? I said, no, which one for you? He said, no, no, no. He said, I'm going to send you a dome and you've got to do a bit of work to finish it. He said, because Whatever he, he said, you could have more money than anybody else on this planet. He said, but you can't help Julie at all. Mm. He said, you yeah. Can, he said you can't. Yeah. No one can buy yourself out of this. Yeah. So he said, you need to be focused on something. So he said, I'm going to give you a bit of a project to do. Wow. He said so. Um, he said the boys have decided that this dome would be good for you. Because the dome he's wearing at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know how they did it, but a couple of weeks later. A big box turned up and I thought, oh, that's a dome, but it was a bit big for the dome. Like, that's a big box. But there was also an interactive uh, R2 for Julie, the right. Hasbro one, which you... Wow. Did, and a Get Well card, but I don't know how they got all the guys to sign it. It's just signed by people all over America. Right. Thought, how wow. did you achieve this? Wow. So it was a great big Get Well card, so big. And she had, I said, those are little mini droids. And then there was a note from the guys, you better get on with this build. Brilliant. Well, that's build the spirit for you. You know, that's yeah. that's what this community is all yeah, about. You brilliant. know, worldwide as well for the Americans to yeah. to kindly jump on board and, and help with that. Well, yeah, it was great. I was um, I was so shocked, and then I I was sent photos of the other builders who built both of them. There was one guy, and he said, "I built R two ages ago, and I built B nine, and I'm also building Gort and so all this other stuff." And then he had this area which was about twice as big as my house. On the back of his place. Wow! Wow! But yeah. So wow. yeah, they got me going with it, and um, I did get a bit lazy because as she was getting better, I did slow down on that build. Right. And I left, I left I two legless, literally for years. Right. So thankfully, the pressure was off. 
to finish our team yeah. because thankfully Julie was better Julie, was, thought, Julie recovered didn't she thankfully so, yeah and then yeah. of course back in 2015 because um, I didn't even know we had the UK I was only on .net all the right. time yeah. and then I was talking to James because he was local and he said we got a UK builder so I went oh brilliant I said and then I spoke to him about all my stuff and, he, and I said I've got to make these bottom panels because I could never get anything for the bottom panels I tried making them out of all sorts of material there were no 3D printers around then. No. Right. So, so it was. So it was just. Um, it was just. What can I fabricate and and make for that? Sorry about that. Because <laughs> they they have to do like um, when they have the new intake. Because she's a head of house at school. Yeah. Started off as a receptionist 15 years ago and worked her way right up. And um, they have to do like a little profile about themselves. And they say, "What's interesting about your home?" She said, "Well, I share my home with a very famous." Droid from a very famous set of films. Where? What droid? R two D two. And then she does say about Ant and Dec. Do you ever watch Ant and Dec? Yes, Miss. Did you watch one with Star Wars on it? Yes. She said, "We well, you know the R two D two. It was fantastic. That's my R two D two. That was my husband." <laughs> <laughs> they said, "Can you ever bring it back into school again?" And I said, "When all this madness is over, I said, if you yeah. want me to pop him into the school like I did before, and the kids can just." Because it's so funny when I took him there the first time, they just formed a line and just uh, they can have a photo with him. Yeah, by all means. So, so Paul, tell me, what's your go-to biscuit? Rich tea. We've had this one already. Yeah. We have, yeah. yeah. Can I have a biscuit? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> So what would you like, mate? Because it uh, didn't work last time, we didn't get any food. He's going to ask you again. What would you like? <laughs> <laughs> Are you hungry? Yeah. Right. I okay, prefer something. cake. Yeah, go on then. We'll go with cake then, Paul. How about that? Would you like um, a Victoria Oh, I love Victoria yes. sponge. Yeah. Okay. You don't happen to have some, do you, Paul? That's better than rich tea, isn't it? <laughs> do you want a biscuit as well? No. I <laughs> sure <laughs> Some cake would be lovely, Paul. Thank you so much. Here you go, guys. <laughs> Oh, oh no, look at that! Wow, good God! Oh, Thank you so much, Paul. That's and amazing. If you, want, wow. if you want a second one to take back with you, you can. So, Paul. Yeah, sorry. Let me ask you another question. <laughs> okay. You don't have to get up for this one. Okay. In the entire Star Wars saga, yeah. I had this question for everybody. If you could be that guy that was in that scene, and you're down the pub and you go, you know when that happened? Yeah. What's the virtual line for it? I was there moment. Oh sorry, you talked to me? Yeah. Mm. The I was there moment. Okay. In any of the Star Wars films, mm. what would it be? So it could be, I always say about um, in Hoth, when they take down the Atat, you know, to, to be a character there and have seen that thing, yeah. what scene in Star Wars would you have liked to have been in? Me? Oh, I think I would have liked to have been in the Falcon, boot and Vader off into space so that Luke could put a big hole in the Death Star. Okay. Uh, that would okay. be real cool. Okay. Because I've always had, not an issue with it, but I've always thought from the Rebel Alliance, if it would have been me, as soon as Vader and his two uh, associates went into the trench, I would have sent three more Jacksons in the island. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. I would have said, okay, have we got any... Any more groups out there? Okay, right. blue, two, three, and four. Take them three idiots okay. out, and I'll just put a big hole in there. Mm. Another different answer. Interesting. It's yeah. a good answer. Yeah, that yeah. would have been good. Um, yeah. I, I used to like the idea of being um, with Luke on Tatooine, but I didn't like the way that his aunt and, her aunt and uncle got dealt with by the Imperial forces. Fair point. Mm. Yeah. Considering how poor yeah. they are at shooting, they were only good in that one film. <laughs> after that, they became all the. Obviously, all the um, marksmen all retired after that film, and all the young crew, the youngsters came through and looked very good. <laughs> very good. Um, so another question, Paul. We were with Glenn a few weeks ago, as you were saying earlier. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was crossing brilliant. the Humber Bridge. Um, so that was the first R2 builder's record, which we hope to be making more of them, because yeah, yeah, um, yeah. he did quite a long distance with that, which was, we worked out as 1.9 miles, I think. Oh, that was, yeah, good, it was quite really. impressive. Um, so we have now started a new section called Beat Off Glim. Now, what <laughs> okay. challenge would you like to do with your astromech or see someone else do with theirs? Do with theirs? Mm. <laughs> You're quick to say do with theirs. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to 
have a conversation with somebody before I send them off to do anything, I probably, um, I've probably got quite a good record for taking the longest time to build. <laughs> yeah. I it took the best part of ten years to complete it. Um, what would I like to see somebody do with theirs? Um, I'm trying to think. Some sort of um, challenge or a record breaking feat, maybe of some kind. You know, um, just to set a challenge to other builders. Or an idea that some builder may go off and try and do it. Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting to see how one... One thing I would like to do, if you if you had a... It'd have to be indoors, of course, it would be impossible to achieve. It'd be to, run, to, to fully charge the battery on him and see how long he would run for until the battery actually dies. That's a good one. That's a good one. Which right. is, yeah. Because, of course, we... We monitor our voltage on there. And yeah. I, and yeah. I do MCM for eight hours, and it still says oh 27.8 volt. And then I completely finish MCM, come home 24.9, and he's still whirring along brilliantly. Yeah. But I've never run him until he's run out of battery. A bit like on Top Gun, he used to put a gallon of fuel in and say, "Fire the car will go." Yeah. 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 I like it. I like that. I like that. Fire, yeah. And that would be quite good to do as a group effort. Yeah. So you could have like an endurance test. Yeah. Where you could have a lot of builders at an event. Yeah. Driving all day Just constantly. It, yeah. And seeing who the last man is standing. Yeah. I like it. I like that. That's and that like way, it. there's um, it's, it's a good bit of fun. Okay. And I like that one, Paul. That's good. That's that's a bit more doable than the um other one we had for Mike Berry. <laughs> what was Mike? Mike was a uh, parachute jump. <laughs> I was going to say, I, as soon as you said it, I thought he was going to say, could we see if one would parachute off the Bristol mm. suspension bridge and land on a boat driving underneath? No, I'm not. No. Yeah, yeah. He didn't sure. go to that no, thing, no. no, he didn't. So, um, Paul, how long have you lived in Bristol? Oh, all my life. All your life? So yeah. you're born and bred? Yeah. Okay. Lee, have you got a uh, question? Mm. Just finished my cake, so I'll yeah. just went to my mouth. Is um, never speak with your mouth full. So, I've got a hidden talent, and it's actually doing various dialects around the UK. Okay, so I can talk Bristolian like this, you see. So, you think <laughs> I'm from Bristol? I do, <laughs> yeah, I sound just like someone from Bristol, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So my question to you is, do you have any hidden tones? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one I didn't know I had was being able to build all this stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that's a good answer. Before I started building the big guy, it was just like little model cars mm. and stuff. In fact, in either my sh in my shed somewhere, there is a scale model kit of a McLaren that um, Ayrton Senna and Alan Frost used to drive the MP, whatever it was, in the box, and I can't find it. It's been in there for years. Oh it's actually never been opened oh, wow. or used. <laughs> I'm joking. To, I oh, thought, wow. if I can find it, yeah. I'll paint it, and I'll see if I can actually motorize it. How cool. It. How cool. I think we have discovered today, though, that like Paul's building, for example, yeah. I think his um, hidden talent is considerably better than mine. I don't know. What did you think of the accent? It was really good. You Thank it. you, Paul. Yeah, Thank you. Was good. Thank you. I know you found it. It's no, good. I know it's really good. Do you want to do a few more lines? What, um, so, thank you, Paul, for having us today. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> we need to make this a TV series, I think. Um... Oh, Netflix is not going to be That'd be great. Oh, God. So, uh, yeah, there you go. I'll work on it. Yeah. I'll work on it. So, we'll see where we go to the next <laughs> <laughs> Oh it's Chris Eubank. <laughs> oh God! Oh dear. I'm doing some game console stuff at the moment. Um, for example, uh, I tend to play the VR quite a lot on my PlayStation. Yeah. For the, um, the the Rogue One one. Right. And I've topped the leaderboard. Have you really? Yeah. Wow. Got over. I killed. Well, I stayed in it because if you go to a certain part of the map, it ends it. Right. But I stayed around the Star Destroyer. 
and then you've got over a hundred TIE fighters. Wow. wow. And uh, very good. Of course, there's quite a lot of friends of mine on there, and I tend to tend to beat them. So that might be another hidden hand I'm playing with. Okay. William. Yeah. Oh, you're quite a big gamer then. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, I've done. In fact, years and years ago. Uh, my boss was doing a lot with this thing called Wolfenstein. Yeah, I know. I got in touch with this because he, um, he's now living in it, he's now lives in America. And this guy was developing this game called Doom. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I got talking to this guy and it, I didn't realise, I was walking this little character around these rooms and this Doom game became like really massive. I yeah. remember it being like a little cheeky thing. Yep. Yeah, that VR mission with the um, the Star Wars one. Yeah, it's quite good. You buy Star Wars Battlefront for yep. like two pound fifty. You have to buy it to get the free VR mission. Right. So okay. I, but it's quite good when you start it. You, you've got an attack literally walking over you. And you got right. squadrons now as well, right? That's the new I one. haven't got squadrons yet. Right. Oh, you haven't got it yet. Okay. Yeah. Right. There's um, a few people I know have got it and said, "Are you going to get this?" And I said, "Probably." Yeah. But I play this Titanfall game, which is about a guy with a giant robot. Right. And I tend to top the leaderboard on the multiplayer on that all the time. Wow. Because I'm not usually very good at the Call of Duty and stuff, because usually some young teenager yeah. here hiding in a bush, killing everybody. Yeah. But on this Titan Force thing, I tend to be able to kill everybody. Easily. Mm -hmm. right. What do you play? <laughs> what do I play? I'm yeah. mainly into older games. So I've got yeah. a, a main arcade machine. Yeah, that's good. So I play it all pinball. I like yeah. pinball. I've got my pinball. But you play on your phone as well, don't you? Oh, Clash of Clans. Clash of Clans. See, I've never played that. I've seen the advert for it. Yeah, Clash of Clans, we've played that for years. We've been playing yeah. that for about four years now. Oh, wow. Daily. Oh, wow. Religiously. And I've I got play, to go in and do my I stuff. I play Operation New Earth on the uh, Mac. Oh, okay. Right. Don't know what that is, what? Weird. No, I don't know. It's a bit like Mind Conquer. So, Paul, what are your other hobbies? Other hobbies? Um, I do enjoy 3D printing. Okay. So much so that. Um, I'm 3D printing this little mini uh, B9, but it's sort of like a hybrid Lost in Space Star Wars track, uh, track droid type Amazing. Brilliant. configuration. So that's based on the 39.1% model, isn't it? Yeah. Which you're using obviously the drive system and the legs. Yeah. But you've had someone CAD. Yeah, my mate in Australia who's a complete and utter crazy man, Ian Hughes, his name is. Oh, yeah. He's He's got STLs for. Oh, don't give this to us. Oh, STLs. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got ST he's got STLs for a full size Robula robot, which wow. is bigger than B9. Wow. Boston Space Robot. He's doing this eight foot USS Enterprise, classic USS Enterprise. Wow. Thing, which can be three D printed. He's got all sorts of spaceships and stuff. This is all big stuff that he's. Right. He's um, been work I think he must have been born with a cab machine. The base at the bottom of, you know, when he was born, his mum sat in front of the cab machine. I don't know, but so he's cadded that up for you, has he? Yeah, he's asked to do it. And because uh, some of the builders are building a full-size 3D printed B9 robot. Wow! And he's scaled all that down. So I said, I'd like to make a mini one. And he said, Well, he said, let's use the files I've got, and then uh, we converted them a little bit, and it's worked out really, really well. Great. So for anybody that's under the age of 40, what, what is this? What film is this from or what series so is this from? This is from the old TV show from the 60s. Okay. The old Lost in Space show. And originally I guess there would have been somebody inside this, right? Oh, there's a guy inside there that's carrying it. I don't know how... My memory banks are carrying it. So it's did the tracks rotate right while it was moving, while he was inside it? Uh, yeah, they used to put them along on chains. But wow. when he was doing the walking scenes, they used to have a separate bottom half. That this is a piece, and then they had just the leg there, yep. which he would walk. Okay. Wow. Until further orders. But this is all locked off now, is it, Paul? For this one? Is that? Is it, or is it separate? Oh, it is separate. Oh, they're two separate. Okay. Parts. I bought them yeah. together. Yeah. Well, he, d he does drive well. I'll have to try him back up. And how much does he weigh? Do you know? Dead of night to work at your still. Like triple the weight of a. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> Danger, Lee Towersy. You could tell the weight of it as it moves. Yeah. You'd never yeah. have made Everybody it. Everybody said, how did you get it to rock? And I said, it does it naturally. <laughs> I've got no answer for you. Jesus. Yeah, he's, um... 
Out of batteries. Yeah, batteries. batteries dead. No, but that's, that's okay. That's impressive, Paul. We've had him on since that's amazing. seven o'clock this morning. So how many of these are there in the UK? Well, there was, there's only a couple, but Adam and myself, it's quite good. Back in 2007, I went to Steve's get-together thing. Yeah. Steve Cole. Yeah. And um, I took him, Adam had his dialects and stuff there. Right. And then I started making bits for Adam and right. he made me the feet for my droid. Ah, oh, I see. So it's quite wow. funny. He he was doing his R2 build. I had him done. So when I was building, when I had to build the R2, he said, "You're going to need some feet for that droid, aren't you?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "I got a, a second set that I've done." Amazing. Which um, and other people was asking for me. He said, uh, "No," he said, "I've the mold's gone." Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so I was making. I made a couple of bits like this for him, for Adam and. Uh, I had a different neon. I was going to get a cover for that because that's glass and quite fragile. Wow. Um, but that is normally exposed, is it? Is yeah. It, yeah. It's a, when, yeah. When I go to events, I have all my barriers there and he's yeah. back from... He doesn't have any human interaction. No. no. Only with me. Oh, yeah. Do these work? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just that... Oh, don't worry. I've got a parrot. Don't worry. No. No. <laughs> no. Is this glass as well? Oh, yeah, I made that and it, that was all done in the oven. Bloody hell, Jesus. I better not touch it, I might break it. You will. All, all 100 and, and this is recently remade. I did that in MDF in the beginning and it rotted. So that's now all laser cut acrylic. Jesus. Well, Paul, thank you very much for joining us on Sam and Lee in a cup well, of tea. Thank great. you. It's Thanks for having us. Are you going to yeah. do the accent again? Uh, no, I'm done with that now, I think. <laughs> yeah. I've, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Just well, so when I hit a high, I'm just best to quit, really, don't I? Yeah. So, like being in film? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, though. <laughs>